Well, the Northwest Territories are taking on a different look these days, a very provincial look. The territorial government is in the process of negotiating with Ottawa for new powers and for the very first time, control over its resources and the royalties that they produce. That alone could dramatically change the future of the North and the lives of its people. And joining me now is the Premier of the Northwest Territories, Bob McLeod. Premier McLeod, good to have you here. Thank you, Tom. Very pleased to be here. I want to ask you, first of all, a general question. Why is devolution, that whole process of moving powers from the federal government over to the territorial government, why is that important to you? Well, it's very important for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, it brings uh, decision-making closer to the people that are affected by the decision. So we'll make the decisions in the north instead of having it made in Ottawa. And, of course, it allows us to uh, manage uh, our land and uh, development uh, at, a, at our own pace. And also, we'll collect ro resource royalties. So the uh, development that occurs will not only uh, provide for jobs and employment, but also we will collect royalties that we can invest in uh, programs and services for the people in the Northwest Territories. And in the case of the Northwest Territories, what sort of money are we talking about? Well, based on uh, public accounts that have been published over the years, we're probably looking at a uh, neighborhood of uh, $65 million that will grow as our gross expenditure base increases on an annual basis. And for a population of 41,000 people, $65 million ain't nothing, as they say. That's, That's right. And considerable that, uh, money. As there's development, of course, there'll be more resource royalties as well. And, and let's make this clear to everybody. Even though you're going to uh, have uh, rights to royalties from uh, the, the resource industries in your territory, you nevertheless are still going to be recipients of federal money for a lot of this, uh, especially the infrastructure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can't uh, expect 43,000 people to pay for everything. So we, uh, we expect to have... Uh, continuing relationship with the government of Canada and uh, we with our industry partners uh, and Aboriginal government partners that's how we see uh, development going forward. On the question of resources uh, offshore we were talking about whether there might be oil gas uh, that, that can be uh, found just offshore uh, where does that stand with the feds? Because my understanding is the feds don't necessarily want to give you all the rights to the offshore resources. Well, uh, it's always been uh, the understanding right from day one that once the devolution negotiations are complete, that we have a final agreement, we have a transfer date that after a short period of time uh, that... Uh, we would start negotiations on the offshore with the, the government of Canada and other governments that are involved. So almost just like any other province, you're always in negotiations with, with the feds. Final question to you, Premier. Uh, as many have pointed out, you're almost a province now if you take a look at the powers that, that you're going to have. Uh, what is stopping you from uh, applying for or asking for full provincial status? Is it the other provinces that are fighting you? Well, uh, I wouldn't say they're fighting us. Uh, right now with devolution, we think we'll have the best of both worlds. We'll have province-like powers and we'll have uh, maintain uh, funding and increased funding. Whereas we've looked at becoming a province and uh, under the formula arrangements with provinces, uh, if we became a province, we'd receive less funding, uh, less money from the federal government. And under the Constitution of Canada, to become a province, you need 50% or more support from five of the most populated province in uh, Canada. Now, I'm not saying anybody's fighting it, but I guess the, the, the question is, do we have that support? And we haven't tested the waters out, but we recognize that uh, in 1930s, when Alberta became a province, they had a population of 100,000 people. So. Uh, We've got 43,000 right now, so we probably have a little bit ways to go yet. But if you're making more money as a territory, you may be the first one to fight the idea of becoming <laughs> <Yeah>. a prophet. <laughs> Premier, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate it. Yeah.